Hey there, everybody. It's Amiga 35, and to mark that occasion, I thought I'd reintroduce some people to some tools that we used to have back in the day, which enhanced Workbench. And if you didn't use those tools, or if you don't even now, you might want to take advantage, and you can download those in the description. And if you click on the description, you should find a download link. So it's going to take a long time to go through them. This is my familiar workbench. You might remember the art from the art videos. I've got some emulators there from all those emulator videos that I did. Utilities, those are Wordworth, Transright Junior, things like that. Communications, maybe we'll get into communications one day. The games, well, you've seen plenty of these games on the play guides. And the tools is pretty much bigger than you might have seen it before and the tools menu has lots of things in there and so well, let's move through those one by one in the first one I prioritize window and task tools so let's check out the first one Priman and clicking on that it comes up with all of the elements that we've got running on our computer you can see DFO, DHO, the console device the RAM, the RAM library, the track disk device, which is part of the disk drive, and we're using UAE, so it's got the auto mounter on there as well. So these are the familiar ones, the input device is the keyboard, the con device I think is the command line interface, workbench of course, and assign X. So from here we can kill or break things which aren't working, and I bet that we'll see some more of this program a bit later on. And Assign X. Assign X is a program that I've got running in my startup sequence and that loads before anything else because I find that's crucial. Because I've ever found a program that says cannot find disk whatever in DFO. So with Assign X all we need to do is it comes up well you can retry that. You can't find disk 3 where is it you put it in the disk drive. Or you can assign that to anywhere you like in RAM or of course um, our hard drive, and the games, it can't find disk 3, well it's in games, sports, wherever, you can click on OK and it'll assign it to that position and it should find disk 3, if the files are on there it should find that and assign it there for whatever file that it's looking for. We can even mount it as a new disk, <clears throat> although I wouldn't really recommend that, I don't really know why you'd mount a blank disk or we can deny it to do anything, or we can cancel that altogether. So, disk failed. So, that's Priman, and if anybody's used the Windows versions of these, then you'll definitely know that this comes in handy for rogue tasks that need to be killed. So, let's have a look at those settings. We can change the interface. It is installed as a commodity. We can press Alt and P to make it pop up at any time, which is handy and it can be hiding around there in the background. When we close that down, that will appear as an icon. Double clicking that will make it pop up. So we can have that floating around whilst we're messing around with all of these tools. And don't forget this is the window on task tools. And if we want to delete something, we can delete to ask the task from here. Um, we can remove the task from whatever priority list it is. We've got Priorman now running and it says it's waiting for an input. It needs Priorman, but there it is. And so we can check out things using this ask task and we can get rid of things from there. And then we can go through those all over again. We can also abort command, which I'll come back to later on. So these are the task killers in this column. In this one, we've got YAS, Desktop Switch, and Switch. What do they do? Well, they help with switching between different things. So if we've got different things running, let's just put Opus on in the background. And then if I hold down the left mouse button and press the right button, it will come back up. And that means that we can switch automatically between different tasks and different screens. And so that's a screen switcher. This is a desktop switch. So that allows you to switch screens by clicking on the image of it, just like Windows. And this is also another screen switcher. And you can screen switch with Alt-S. So if I hold down Alt and S, 
It will now show me all those screens to switch to. Hopefully, unnamed window, task tool, switch, directory opus. I can now switch using all these switch tools. And because we've got so many things to switch in the background, we'll try this task killer again. So, yes, we'll leave yes running. Switch, we can now remove that task. Or should we want to remove it? Yes, let's get rid of that. And that looks like it will leave yes running in the background. So, escape. So, these in the central column are switches we can switch between different screens then we've got yaps and all the public screen this is yet another public screen app so if you use that it will show you hopefully the screen modes even though this workbench isn't set up for that the screen mode whatever it is you can change that change the number of colors as well you even create a new screen mode from this and of course well choose the modes of those screen modes and these public screen managers all virtually do the same thing and some of these don't actually work without uh, preferences setting up and that kind of thing and yours is alt tab well that's apparently supposed to be a public screen manager where you press alt and tab if i press alt and tab on this machine because it's emulation it won't work and um, we've also got Mod Pro, PSM and Wimp X. And so Mod Pro isn't going to work, but PSM is another public screen manager. Pretty much like we've seen so far, we can move to that screen as well. And so we can move the entire thing to that screen. And so public screen managers are helpful. And WimpX, let's see what that does. WimpX, that gives us another public screen manager, only it's in its own public screen, so you can keep that running in the background. It even tells you the resolution and things like that. And you can move it to the front and the back and things like that. But anyway, we're just going to close that. Permission denied, we can't close something. So let's return to the workbench, that's a good idea and all these will have their quirks so those are the windows promotion tools the public screen managers the windows switch managers of course we've got running and also the priority managers and the task killers so finally we've got through one directory congratulations of all this lot so let's move on to the next one if you want to change your mouse pointer into interlace mode let's run that and that'll move the mouse pointer into an interlace one which makes it a bit smaller and the next one d mouse is very special because if you have a ball mouse or a slow windows mouse you might want to make that quicker and at the moment it's running at speed 4 which is the quickest that normally workbench will allow you to use the mouse but if we click on D mouse that will now move up to a new speed 4 which is ridiculously quick and you may notice that it auto highlights whatever window that we're pointing to and if I double click on that window it will now move that to the front and if you don't want it to auto highlight I've set up a number of scripts so this moves it down to speed 2 and it turns off the auto highlight although you can still bring things to the back and the front and this thing's also got a few hidden extras including blanking the screen pointer if you leave that alone for five seconds the screen points will blank so let's just see that again you can see the screen pointer and after five seconds that thing was supposed to blank and also it's got a screen saver on there if you leave that 300 seconds the screen saver is meant to come on which is a windows type screen saver and so that also increases the mouse precision as well if you read the documentation you'll be able to change these scripts and change the position and you can see it's still also highlighting that window so if you don't want that you click on this one that changes it to mouse speed one no auto as you can see no auto and it also means that we can still use the back and front which is terrific the mouse precision which is terrific and it knocks off the screen saver so we don't have to worry about the screen saver but the mouse blanker is still on so that will blank if we leave that alone so that's d mouse all set up 
And so input devices. Oh, look at that. Installing DMAGs. Done. And so let's get rid of that. And the next one is free wheel. And free wheel, just to blow your mind for a second. Commodore actually built in mouse wheel support into Workbench. And because it's Commodore, what they did, the American guys put it in there, but the management completely flubbed up the software, and so we don't get mouse wheel support in Workbench. What this package does is switch it back on again. So let's switch that on. I'm using the Nor 30 at the moment, so I'm using Freewheel 20. And if I double click that again, it'll come up with the preferences. So I can change this one, the mouse speed, the click to front, on and off, click to back. And these are extra features. I can change the hotkey of this particular window. I can set the scrolling of the window under the pointer or a very large number of other things. The scroll speed, I can move that quicker or slower. And I can change all kinds of things to do with the scrolling of the mouse. Set buttons as well. It can do all kinds of things. You'll have to read the manual. So now, as you can see, this free wheel actually does work. And if I close down a lot of these things and bring up the games menus again, and look at my arcade games, I should, if all goes well, be able to move those up and down with the wheel, which is very helpful. And if I now go back to directory opus, I can now, well, I should be able to, if you can figure this right, move that up and down. But if we look at, but if we now read a document with this, we can use the wheel to scroll up and down. And sometimes reading documents in these things is pretty difficult. So that scroll wheel helps tremendously and having that middle mouse wheel helps tremendously. You can see it's not scrolling anywhere in this window because it's already full. But if we make it move along, we can scroll with that. So that's the free wheel. Just when you thought that the middle mouse button could not be used, yes you can, and the wheel as well. So, this is a joy mouse command, and what that will do, of course, will make it so that your joystick can be controlled, well, can control the mouse pointer. And so you can move around the screen with your joystick, and I think it's, well, the fire button to select things, and bring things to the front, and close menus, and things like that. But, if you have a joystick, and you don't have a fire button, that can definitely help so the final one is F mouse and with F mouse you can configure lots of menus we can also change the mouse acceleration just like we've seen already and the screen blanker it comes with a screen blanker as well so that's F mouse definitely D mouse and freewheel are terrific and that means that we can use the mouse to our full capability so joyport test guess what that is that'll be a joyport tester let's see if that works move the mouse yes that's a very nice joyport tester don't forget we're looking at import devices here and joystick what does that do well joystick shows you yet again the joystick so close that window port switch switches over port 0 to port 1 and port 1 to port 0 again if you've got a broken port and if you want to use the joystick in port 1 or whatever this thing will switch ports and I've put two scripts in there to enable you to switch ports over I won't bother doing that in this particular case and joyride I'm not sure what that does and joy to keys you can change the joysticks to the keys if you want to do that and the script is there so you can control a joystick with the keyboard and so this is joy test cd32 so if you have a cd32 controller you can test that with this particular device and fic32 keypad what does that do well now you can configure using maybe a script your keyboard up arrow and arrow left and right and the number pad for the different bu buttons involved and so you can use the keyboard instead if you don't have 
the CD32 pad. And Power Snap is an interesting tool because if we look at the documentation and open Power Snap, it doesn't appear to do anything. But if you read the documentation, that is a very, very interesting tool because it will allow us, by holding down the Alt key, it should be possible to grab any, any, any number of things from any source and paste them into any source. Start a new file and I press Alt and V together that will then paste exactly what I've just copied into that particular space. And that comes in very, very handy sometimes when you're trying to copy things from one list window into another. You can simply have two list windows open, drag and drop, copy and paste. And so the Alt V is pretty similar to how the Windows does it. And um, Power Snap is a very interesting program. And so input devices, we're down to Power Snap. That has lots and lots of different uses. It's best to, I think that does have a pop-up GUI, but I'm not sure I ah, yet. Yeah. It does have different GUIs, so you can change the keys involved and what it does in any particular order. So let's close that one up. We've got a key show, which shows the keyboard, a key map editor, which shows and alters the key map. So in this case, if I select the F keys, I can alter these and also it shows me all the different languages for all of the different keys as well. Key finder, that will allow you to find any key on the keyboard and it will also show you the hex codes for that. Which if you're a programmer, the hex codes come in handy. And mouse key, mouse key. So that's a mouse keyboard if you want to type anything on the screen. And it looks like we've just got rid of something, but if we rename this and we use this, this is a mouse control keyboard. So anything that you can't do on the keyboard, you can do with this one, it pops up. So if you want that, that's another interesting feature, mouse key, and again, no idea how to get rid of it. You can change the screen mode, I notice, on that one as well. So these are the keyboard ones, visual keyboard, these are the CD32, and the power snap, these are the joysticks, and these for the mouse, mouse wheel, and things like that. So those are the input devices. So we've seen directory tools already with the IR work, the directory util2 use, util that I like to use. There's also file master2, which does a pretty similar thing, and... There's also M tool, which is another package that I found that does exactly the same thing. So you've spoiled for choice as far as directory tools. There's an undelete command line tool here and the restore from disks. If you have disks, something to undelete from a disk. And if you want to tree DFO, you can use the tree command. And so I've written a script where it will list out my entire directory and of course you can print this off to a printer if you want to do that so if you want to tree things there is a tree command built into that so let's just break into that and break out of it and cryptomat if you want to encrypt things then you put in the source here at the destination here you put in a, a decryption key and you can crypt or decrypt it from here so cryptomat this is a very interesting program, and of course, DRChiver, you couldn't have a workbench without a DRChiver, and if we check out the settings, we can see that this will DRChive LHA, LZH, and all of the LZX, all of the LZs, and ZIP as well, DMS, ARJ, and ROAR, 
And you might notice if we go back to DMS, we can even change, I think that's the compression method. So this unarchiver will unarchive anything that you throw at it. So that's a pretty good tool if you want to unarchive stuff into a directory. Let's move across to the screen colors and color patch will change the screen colors and this is on top of whatever you've got going on in workbench so this is on the fly and this will do everything on the fly so it's one of those packages that you don't really want to mess around with and i've already messed around with this too much already and so you can see that we can change the contrast and the color and the brightness independently of whatever you've got your TV set up for at the particular moment. And so sometimes you can get this looking much better than it would look on your original monitor. So you can even change that to pop up and you can have different projects. We can load and save things within that. You can even emulate different monitors with this particular package. And so that's color patch. It comes in very useful indeed. And if you want to change the colors, we can swap those around with colors. Color lock makes sure that you can lock the palette in place. And color palette is again another color palette one. And you can change that to any palette that you like. This is running an eight color screen because this is running in directory opus and the workbench is running in a four color screen. And so if we want to change color in directory opus, we can do that and it will change on the fly. So we can also save our palette and everything else from that using tools just like that. So that's an interesting tool. Fix magic workbench. That fixes magic workbench if we're using that and full palette I'm not quite sure what that does because that requires a data type WB plane enables you to increase a workbench plane so if I add a workbench plane to that mode that will now be in eight colors hopefully so if we check out the color palette program again yes we are now running workbench in eight colors the original colors that we had before plus more colors to mess around with the color schemes on your Amiga. Paldeck, that's another one of these live programs. We've got this now stuck on the eight, eight colors, but this will yet again change the color palette. And if you want to reset the color palette, you can use a reset color palette tool if it's completely messed it up. And the moment I want to subtract the workbench plane, that's good, and that will get rid of that. And there's another reset palette tool and load color map. If you've got a color map set from one of these packages, you can load it up using that palette, and that's basically what the reset color button does. So now we can change all of the colors and the screen colors. And let's have a look at icons. And so you might be familiar with a few of these icon editors. Maybe not, this is Icon Deluxe. Some of these are demos, but we can scroll around the thing. Let's zoom in. And we can now scroll around and edit our icons. And we're now stuck in four color modes, so we can only edit the four color icons. So some of these you can see that has lots of different features. And you ought to have abandoned your work, yes. You can see some of these have gone to massive trouble to include lots of different features. And in this particular one, we can change the icon width to the entire width of our screen and change the icon height as well. And we can edit that picture. And you can see as we edit that picture, that will be edited on a live update on that side of the screen so if we change the color we can do that and we can also magnify that so we can magnify a live update that's a pretty strange icon editor if you ask me but it is there and it's one of those strange things new icons is there as well if you want to switch on the new icons and 
we'll maybe take a look at that a bit later on. The commodities, I've got a few more commodities in there which you can mess around with the back and front and all those kinds of things. And if you have D-mouse running then you don't need those commodities, but there are a few more in there. In the preferences we've got the usual preferences which are, well this is P-prefs which is an alternative to the prefs which is on the workbench 1.3 disc sadly most of these are workbench 2 tools and so don't show eye border, guess what that does that removes all of the border from all of the icons and so if you've got a very high resolution screen and you don't want to show the border around the icons that's fantastic but on a very low resolution screen like this sometimes the border icons are important Icon snap will snap those to a grid and change the WB pattern and I think that requires data types, yes it does, but that allows you to change the workbench pattern in workbench so that you can change the background at your leisure and of course some of these need setting up properly and reading the installation to get those working. So in the preferences we've got Nick prefs as well and if we start Nick prefs that supposedly lets you change the workbench picture in the background, change the busy pointer as well to whatever you want the busy pointer to look like, change the floppy disk, have it calibrated however you want it and so random pattern there and start iprefs but if I start iprefs in this mode it will load up some ridiculously high screen mode which I had it set to on my setup because it took me forever to get cyber graphics installed on my computer and having installed cyber graphics on my computer well unfortunately I can't get it off again so now the screen mode is in high resolution cyber graphics screen mode and so you can see we have a workbench picture loaded in the background. So let's reset that machine and look at the final few. The system snoop is again another one of those extensions where it allows you to see everything on your computer and if you want to get rid of anything from this particular thing like the GAD tools library I can set a priority of that, I can freeze it, I can close it, and I can even remove it from this particular screen. Unfortunately this particular program relies on the GAD tool so it's not going to do that. But we can see our tasks as well through this screen, our system, the interrupts, the de resources, the devices, the libraries, the residents and the assigns. And we can remove assigns and hopefully add assigns as well. Just choose a directory and we can assign things from this particular program. So this is the system snoop uh, directory and in here we've got a pretty similar one and you can see it's listed in the directory tree in this particular package and CPU load we can now see a CPU load of whatever is going on on our system and graphics mem I presume that's a basic memory tool which shows you how much memory memory we have got that's show config and libs I'm not quite sure what that does snoop dos of course the usual snoop dos where we can find out what's going on in our system and then another snoop dos and sysinfo and a system test utility which I won't run at the moment triton which needs installation and I'm able to open window and we can take a look at Snoop DOS to check that out. For some reason it's trying to look at a config in S. I haven't set that up so it's failed. So we cannot run Triton in this case. So this is for memory snooper. And I'm not quite sure what half of these do, if they even run at all. Memory snooper, and yes, that's another Snoop DOS kind of a program where it shows us what's going on in memory I think and memory snooper I'm not quite sure but we can disable things it's not registered 
So, do you really want to quit? Yes. I'm going to quit that. And quit that. And quit that. And this. And that. And this. So, you can see the CPU load is mounting up on our screen. So, let's have a look at the system tools. From here, we can change the assigns with various assigns managers. We've got assign X that I showed you earlier on and assign Z. We can assign our hotkeys with Angie. I'll just show you that. We can assign hotkeys to everything, including the disk being inserted. And in this case, it says, if it exists, DH1 utility say command. And you've inserted a disk right now. So we can assign various shortcuts and various things to happen with Angie and add things. And again, that's a powerful key shortcut program and so cache control we can control our all 30 caches and our all 40 caches with that particular program as well as I think control patch as well patch control I'm not quite sure but a lot of these do the same things add icon and virtual memory that will add virtual memory and if we run out of memory which we won't it will add hard drive space and so we've got a virtual memory on our Amiga. And of course, the reboot command reboots the machine. And something that says needs MUI. So if we go into this, find the magic user interface, run that thing. And yep, yeah, fine. And now we go back, needs MUI. The only thing that I could get working in this one, I think was Amiga load. Ah, there it is. So you can see the CPU, the ready, the fast memory, and the chip memory as well, if you want to do that with that package. And so there are tons and tons of utilities in this particular archive, all of which are supposed to make it easier to use your tool. So we've looked at now the system tools and so system diagnosis we've got the advanced Amiga analyzer which of course analyzes everything that's going on including the joystick ports and anything else that you've got running as well it will give you those the parallel port the serial port the memory the disk drive even the video and so if you want to mess around with the video and the audio and things like that there's lot more to do with that package the Amiga test kit does virtually the exact same thing and it will analyze all these different things including the audio and the video and it's one of those things where I'm not sure how to reset the machine well I do know how to reset the machine but I'm not sure how to get rid of that program but in system diagnosis pop-up info of course that will pop up info about your system and memory tools show mem if you want to have a visual representation of your system memory we can show mem and pool mem as well and survey the memory all these different things that you can do with these kinds of applications and if you've got workbench 1.3 free mem and all these things are workbench 1.3 applications as well so you can even show mem and this will show us visual representation of our memory and so in this case that will show us our screen memory and this is what we've actually got going on on the screen so this is our screen memory and we can go through and find out what is actually going on on our Amiga so that's a pretty weird tool show mem so we're almost through these now come on to these disk repair tools we've seen already those repair disk errors miscellaneous tools well there's a calculator in there and a bar clock and the opus the adf tools which on archive adfs productivity tools which means that we can do things which i'll probably come back to a lot later on we can make Amiga guides through that as well and make buttons menus. We can simply edit a script and make our own buttons which appear on pop down menus and buttons on the screen. And we can also 
There are HD install tools that we've seen already. They will help us install a hard drive. Lastly, there are a few showers and converters in here which will show us pictures. And I think waveform will show us waves on that screen. So thank you for checking out my various system enhancement tools. If you want to change the windows and the colors and the icons and tune the input devices and check out your system, snoop the system, fix your system and also choose the preferences and the colors and on archive things and things like that. You can basically diagnose and fix things from here using that particular tool using this particular archive so if you want to check out some of these tools for yourself then check out the link in the description thank you